Delicious meets nutritious in the snack that packs a real protein punch, wonderful pistachios. Each one-ounce serving of wonderful pistachios has six grams of protein, giving you over 10% of your daily value and making wonderful pistachios one of the highest protein nuts. But perhaps more than that, I love all of the flavors they have. Their sea salt and vinegar ones are my favorite when I'm craving that flavor but want to keep it healthy. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Wonderful pistachios come in a variety of flavors like chili roasted, honey roasted, smoky barbecue, and jalapeno lime. Perfect for enjoying with family and friends or taking them with you on the go. Whether you're a pistachio purist who loves cracking open every nut or you prefer the convenience of no shells pistachios, Wonderful Pistachios has got you covered. Grab Wonderful Pistachios and elevate your snacking game today. So fill up with a healthy snack when hunger strikes. Visit wonderfulpistachios.com to learn more. That's wonderfulpistachios.com. This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 2518. Seven powerful mantras to stop you from overreacting and arguing with people by Mark Chernoff of markandangel.com. And I'm Dr. Neil Malik. Hey there, and welcome to another bonus Sunday episode where I share an article from one of the other podcasts in our network. Today's post comes from Optimal Relationships Daily, where articles covering all types of relationships are read to you every day. So with that, here's an article from Greg as we optimize your life. Seven Powerful Mantras to Stop You from Overreacting and Arguing with People by Mark Chernoff of markandangel.com. Over the past several years, there's a way of being that I've gradually been cultivating in myself. I've been taming my tendency to overreact and argue with people when their behavior doesn't match my expectations. As human beings, we all have an idea in our heads about how things are supposed to be. And sadly, this is what often messes our relationships up the most. We all get frustrated when things don't play out the way we expect them to, and people don't behave like they're supposed to. We expect our spouses and children to act a certain way, our friends to always agree with us, strangers to be less difficult, and so on and so forth. And when reality hits us, and everyone seems to be doing the opposite of what we want them to do, we overreact. Frustration, stress, arguments, tears, etc. So, what can we do about this? Breathe. When you feel like your lid is about to blow, take a long, deep breath. Deep breathing releases tension, calms down our fight or flight reactions, and allows us to quiet our anxious nerves and choose more considerate and constructive responses. So, for example, do your best to take a deep breath next time another driver cuts you off in traffic. In a recent poll we hosted with our core students, Overreacting while fighting traffic was the most commonly cited reason for overreacting. Just imagine if all the drivers on the road took deep breaths before making nasty hand gestures or screaming obscenities at others. There's no doubt that it can drive us crazy when we don't get what we expect from people, especially when it's completely out of our control. But trying to change the unchangeable, wanting others to be exactly the way we want them to be, just doesn't work. The alternative, though, is unthinkable to most of us, to breathe, to let go, to lead by example, and to accept people even when they irritate us. Here's the way of being that I've been cultivating and advocating. To breathe deeply and often, to remind myself that I can't control other people, to remind myself that other people can handle their lives however they choose, to not take their behavior personally, to see the good in them, to let go of the ideals and expectations I have about others that cause unnecessary frustration, arguments, and general overreactions, to remember that when others are being difficult, they are often going through a difficult time I know nothing about, and to give them empathy, love, and space. Being this way takes practice, but it's worth it. It makes me less frustrated, it helps me to be more mindful, it improves my relationships, it lowers my stress, and it allows me to make the world a slightly nicer place to be. I hope you will join me. These mantras can help us practice together. Mantras to Stop Overreaction and Arguments Since, like you, I am only human, other people's chaotic behavior still gets an emotional rise out of me sometimes. 
So I've implemented a simple strategy to help me. In a nutshell, I proactively remind myself to take a deep breath when I need one and to practice what I preach. Anytime I catch myself doing the opposite, I pause and read the following mantras to myself. I keep them on my iPhone. Then I take some fresh, deep breaths and begin my practice. Number one, inner peace and harmony begins the moment you take a deep breath and choose not to allow another person or event to control your thoughts and emotions. Angel and I discussed this in more detail in the inspiration chapter of 1,000 Little Things Happy Successful People Do Differently. Number two, don't let the silly dramas of each day get the best of you. Be selective in your battles. Oftentimes, peace is better than being right. You simply don't need to attend every argument you are invited to. Number three, most people make themselves unhappy simply by finding it impossible to accept life just as it is presenting itself right now. Breathe. Sometimes you just need to slow down, stay calm, and let things happen as they were supposed to happen. No commentary needed. Number four, inhale, exhale. A moment of silence and a moment of anger can save you from a hundred moments of regret. Truth be told, you are often most powerful and influential in an argument when you are most silent. Others never expect silence. They expect yelling, drama, defensiveness, offensiveness, and lots of back and forth. They expect to leap into the ring and fight. They are ready to defend themselves with sly remarks, cocked and loaded. But your mindful silence? That can really disarm them. Number five, even when your frustration is justified and something needs to be said, don't be hateful. Keep your heart and mind wide open. Peace is not the absence of trouble, but the presence of love. Be mindful and communicate accordingly. Number six, it's much easier to overreact and judge people than it is to understand them. Understanding takes extra kindness and patience, and this extra is what love is all about. Love is living your life, but sharing it. It's forgiveness, patience, optimism, and sometimes it's a hug or a smile when there's nothing left to say. Number seven, keep doing your best not to overthink life's little frustrations and disagreements. Answers come to a relaxed mind. Space allows things to fall into place. A good attitude yields the best results in the end. You just listened to the post titled, Seven Powerful Mantras to Stop You from Overreacting and Arguing with People, by Mark Chernoff of markandangel.com. And thanks a million to Mark for that post and those great reminders. Seven truly wonderful bites of knowledge and calm that we can bring to otherwise stressful situations. If I may offer one more, though, one to hover over the whole practice, I would bring it back to what Mark mentioned about patience. He said understanding takes extra kindness and patience. And while he is right in that this is true of how we interact with others, it's also crucial to remember that it's true of how we interact with ourselves. Overreacting and arguing are common practice for some people, and have been for as long as they can remember. Now, there's nothing wrong with this, but it does mean that it will likely take a while longer for long-term change to be implemented and for the first reaction to not be aggression. So, if this is you, whether it's in one situation or many, follow these mantras, but also be kind and patient with yourself during the times that it's harder to maintain or you come up short and become more argumentative than you'd like to be. This change can be a long-term practice, and coming back and trying is what's more important than getting it right every single time. So, on that note, we are going to wrap this one up. Twas a wonderful post, and I'm glad I had you here with me today. You know I'll be back tomorrow, and that will be with a post from another Mark, M-A-R-K though, Mark Manson. We'll start one of his two-parters, which are always fun. So, I'll see you there, where your optimal life awaits.